You are listening to the Push Media Podcast Network. This is good shit. Let me be the first person to wish you a happy Women's Month. Because I'm sure, I'm actually, I'm actually certain that nobody has wished you a happy Women's Month yet. Not personally. Maybe you've gotten a happy Women's Month email from your job saying this is how our company uh, champions women. Uh, we employ them. You know, things like that. Um, so happy Women's Month. And to all African-American black listeners of the show, I'm real sorry your month's over. And you go back to being slightly below women for at least this month, I guess. That's just how the calendar is, in, is to be interpreted. That's not me. I treat everyone equally. I believe everyone is created equal except Russians. And yeah, just Russians. I, I, I disclude them from most of anything, as one should. I mean, literally look at the atrocities and war crimes being committed. And there's a billionaire in Russia who said, we're about to run out of money. Something got to give. But let's not get off pace. Off track. So, happy Women's Month. And then, of course, everyone knows April is Autism Awareness Month, which, you know, make of that what you will. But here's a fun fact, something that I just found out is, turns out May, officially, this is according to, like, the UN calendar timekeeping groups, I fact-checked this, May is Asian American Month. So if we just start back at the beginning, it goes Black History Month, Women's Month, Autism Month, Asian American Month. You now have a responsibility to determine if that means anything. I'm not going to say one way or the other, but if we're making a list, we're checking it twice, we're going to find out who's, who's, uh, who's autistic or nice. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, uh, who, who knows really what the point of any of that was, but I'm just here to say happy Women's Month. God damn it, Susan B. Anthony for president. Really anyone for president other than who's currently president right now because I have no faith in what's going on and who's leading us. But I don't want to keep rehashing because it seems like every episode I just explain how we grow closer and closer, inch by inch, to the precipice of imminent nuclear war. I don't want to be the guy who just bangs the war drum. You know why? Because yeah, for fear of um, creativity being stifled, there's people highly, highly more you know, qualified to be telling you that. And I've also started to learn, mainly through most of your mothers writing into the show, that like I think people are starting to take this a little too seriously. I may be right, but I am wrong. You know? And like... Just because I'm wrong doesn't mean I'm not right, though. But that's what's important to remember. All of this is right, even though it's wrong, but it's most certainly accurate, even though it's not been fact-checked. I am just here to present the objective truth as I see it. And as I see it, what I physically see with my own eyeballs is the fact that Poland is putting out anti-tank barricades, which, if you've seen any of the pictures of them online, look like giant hand massagers, these weird-looking white triangular modern art shape looking things but what they really are are designed to prevent a goddamn tank from pulling into your country and poland only puts out shit you know specifically designed to prevent tanks from pulling up in fact any country only puts out shit specifically designed to prevent tanks from pulling up unless they expect you know fucking tanks to pull up there hasn't been a ton of instances in which countries have put out their anti-tank pulling up barricades and then that was a false alarm, and they didn't end up needing the people. Only put them up if they're fully expecting tanks to pull up. So Susan B. Anthony for president, because the guy in charge right now is not making me feel safe or comfortable. But, you know, it's easy for me to say that from here. Because here, there's also crazy, equally preposterous, probably life-threatening news happening in America, like the fact that Tom Brady is considering performing stand-up comedy. We may have... Nuclear warheads point it directly at one another's throats. But I would argue a far more existential threat to all of our peace of mind is the fact that the greatest quarterback of all time, who's also mouth-kissed his children really more than anyone ever should, and that number for him still is more than one. So, I mean, break that down. My man mouth-kisses his own kids. It's very strange. He's not even from the South. 
but he also has seven Super Bowl rings. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. He also kind of has the personality of like a very shy Dexter, who I think is also a tad bit Jeffrey Dahmerish. He does certainly fit the profile of a serial killer, in my opinion, but that's how you win Super Bowls. No one even wants to figure out how many bodies Michael Jordan has because his fingers are full of fucking rings. It's the same logic. Tom Brady awkwardly, through some level of anti-charisma that has reached an accepted amount of, I guess he's charming, I think behind his eyes are a simply dead stone-cold killer who mouth kisses his own children and has decided to postpone a surefire awkwardly but probably successful because he's still him sports broadcasting career in the booth, as many former athletes do. He was going to join Tony Romo and continue to talk about the game he played forever that cost him his family, probably. But instead of doing that, the thing that is most normal that we all wanted him to do, he has decided to prove to everyone that his mental health is fine. He is not going through anything at all. He just wants to decide that he's a stand-up comedian and pursue that. As someone who considers themselves a joke smith, a funny man, a clown, an imbecile, a jester, among many other things, I can tell you that if anyone, especially someone who has at some point in their life, especially if it's been the majority of it, successful, a clear sign of all mental health being as good as possible is not the idea of pursuing stand-up comedy. That is not the pursuit to the endeavor, the odyssey of a, of a man stable and sound in mind. You don't decide, especially as Tom fucking Brady, I think what the world really needs for me is my ha-has, my jokes. As a guy whose sense of humor has been described by many online as mouth kisses his children, I should talk more. I should express more thoughts. And you know the worst part is he's going to be good at it. He's going to be just as good as Chris D'Elia now. He's going to sell just as many tickets as Louis C.K. currently, who just sold out the garden. That's what's going to be weird about it. He's going to be good at it, and it's going to be awkward. And I think we're going to watch a serial killer successfully transition into yet another personality that will further deceive us from the true grim reality, which is the fact Tom Brady has murdered people. I should say allegedly, because I have literally no evidence to base any of this on at all, and I'm making it up, but it is just a gut feeling that I have, and I'm sticking to it, Your Honor. I think he's a serial killer that doesn't know what is what, what is up, what is down. And if you buy a ticket to Tom Brady's stand-up shows... Let me know how it was. I'm sure it was pretty good. <laughs> you know, like, why hate? What, why bother? Why be mad at, at something that, is, that isn't harming anybody? Like, be mad at things that are actually harming people. Or at people just being dumb. And I hate to bring up COVID again, but a thing that I've been noticing this trend, because now the, the newest bit of information is the, uh, a bill has unanimously been passed, which demands that the White House basically declassify all information it has on the uh, origination of COVID. Now... The latest bit of information, again, I guess, because it's what I've been seeing the past few days, is that we now have confirmed the lab leak theory is how the Wuhan virus is responsible for COVID, you know, coming into the world. It leaked out of the lab, hence lab leak theory. Now, I thought that was just what was accepted this whole time. I don't actually remember that not being, I, I remember in the very beginning when it happened, at first everyone was like, oh, it's a weapon, or it came from a bat that was also in a cup of soup or something. That was debated, and then I remember it becoming pretty much known that it just leaked from a lab, not even claiming that it was a weapon. It just probably, most likely, in fact, probably in reality, just an accident leaked from a lab, and that was what I thought happened over a year ago. So I don't know really exactly what changed where now all of a sudden this is a brand new bit of information that everyone's known for a year plus that has everyone, you know, up in arms again. But... That is the newest thing. And, uh, but, but something that I've observed are all these idiots who are somehow taking this to mean like, well, you see, it was a lab leak theory. How do we know this wasn't a weapon? Doesn't this prove that China released COVID as a weapon against its own people just to fuck with us? No, it doesn't, Ding Dong. And that's, you know, Ding Dong, the person I'm talking to being an idiot, not, you know, an Asian American in the month of May. The fact that it leaked out of a lab 
means that an accident probably happened and something came out of the lab that wasn't supposed to. How in the flying sweet fuck does that prove to you that this was a weapon China released on its own people too? And China is still suffering from COVID much, much more than we are. And China was also the very first country to find a COVID vaccine. And you know what they did with that COVID vaccine? They released it to the world. They gave it to the world. They said, here, and I'm sure, you know, the, con- the subcontext, at least in that message from Xi Jinping, was here's the vaccine world, subcontext, our bad. I would like to think something like that was said amongst the world leaders at the G20 summit or whatever the fuck that is. And it doesn't help that there's already been a bunch of self-identified simpletons here in America who have proudly, because they've watched a YouTube channel from Tom, Dick, or Harry in a basement somewhere explaining how actually the COVID vaccine contains a chemical from fireflies which was synthesized by the devil during the Babylonian, you fucking loony tune. There's been a lot of people, a much more surprising amount of people than I ever would have thought who have also decided, hey, I'm, hey over here, I'm a loony tune too. And they're looking at this lab leak confirmation as a further example of, do you see how the, this somehow, even though I'm struggling to connect it hypothetically, relates to the vaccines being fake? See, the vaccine that everyone had to get, well, how did that happen so quickly? Vaccines are supposed to take seven to ten years, but this was rushed out and it was also leaked from a lab and they're air quoting like they're doing anything at all. These bimbos, these ding-dongs, again, not an Asian-American stereotype, these ding-dongs are stupid. And you know why they're stupid? Because there was a pandemic affecting the world, so we rushed a little and made a vaccine. Now, let me just ask you logically, and this is one of my points that I concede to the ding-dongs of America here, again, not the ones in China. (laughs) What I say is, sure, a vaccine was rushed. We skipped all the protocols, all the uh, amount of time that usually goes by. But we did that because there was a pandemic affecting the world. So we rushed it a little. And this is where I will concede to all American ding-dongs, all of these stories that you keep seeing, like in the beginning, how in younger children it would affect their heart, or all of these stories about people dropping dead that are somehow being related to a COVID vaccine, even though they're not, to the more, you know, actually authentic medical documents uh, or or like papers where people are, are explaining potential links and health links to the vaccine that are are yet to come that we could still see in a population. Because again, we really only know the full effects of a vaccine until about 10 years after it's been rolled out. Again, standard common sense and knowledge, which I thought most people have, but they don't. So this is what I would concede. If we had to rush a vaccine because it was affecting the world and closing banks and shutting down the NBA, if we're rushing it, maybe it's not our best batch. Maybe it won't be as strong as, like, say, the shingles vaccine, which we had really no pressure to accurately get down to a goddamn T. And then, hence, you'll notice there are no shingle pandemics happening because that's how it works. But because there was a COVID pandemic happening, we rushed a vaccine. Maybe when you rush things, you don't take your time, dot your T's, cross your I's, and then some things are not as good as they could have been, but you had to get something done anyway. Doesn't that make more sense does, isn't that just fucking common sense and logical? Particularly at a time when everyone has nuclear warheads pointed at one another's neck for unrelated reasons. Don't you think we should maybe not be so conspiratorial when thinking about the global health pandemic that just happened? And again, everyone take a minute to appreciate I am the person who just said let's not be too conspiratorial. We have all weapons pointed at one another ready to go at any moment. We have Poland putting out their anti-tank barricades. Let's worry about Tom Brady doing stand-up comedy. Let's not worry about thinking of another reason China's out to get us. They already are. Accept that. Move on. What are you going to do? Or maybe worry about the aliens that everyone thought were here two fucking weeks ago and no one seems to give a shit about anymore. To remind everyone what happened very recently, we shot several unidentified objects out of the sky, had no idea which country they belonged to, and we ourselves didn't think they belonged to China, which means probably have to be from a different planet. And there's not been any follow-up. No one's pressed anybody for any questions, and we've just moved on to worrying about, you know, COVID again. Let's worry about COVID again. Let's worry about this thing that I thought was already established over a year ago. It probably came from a lab. At this point, does it fucking matter? We just need to get it under control. It was clearly not a weapon that China released on itself because China is not Russia. They're not stupid. And when I I say that, I am trying to say Russians are stupid. 
China wouldn't release a weapon that literally hurts them more than it hurts us, you fucking simpleton. Does that make any sense? China thinks years at a time, Americans think seconds at a time. And that has never been on more full display than it is currently right now with all of these ding-dongs. Again, talking about American simpletons, not Asian Americans. How about stick on the UFO shot out of the sky that we don't have any questions about anymore somehow? Because you know what happened recently? This is real. I saw this. The president of Mexico, president of Mexico, not, not some cartel leader that was wildly racist out of me, not some diplomat or ambassador. I'm talking about the head honcho. That might have been a little less racist. Who knows? The head person in charge of Mexico, the president of Mexico, on his own personal Twitter, posted a picture of this thing, which I can only describe as, and you can look this up for yourself, a fucking alien in a tree, looking down at him. Now Mexico is full of Guillermo del Toro's fairy tale book creatures and shit and myth lore. I'm losing my words here. Mexico is full of chupacabras and, and little elves and shit like that. You know, it's a fantastical place in the desert with some interesting painting and stuff like that. However, this was a real picture that wasn't documented, that wasn't edited, wasn't put through any type of, um, you know, software to, to manipulate it in any type of way. It was just the president of Mexico, the top guy in charge, stepped outside, looked up, saw what looks like a fucking alien to me looking back at him in a tree, snapped a picture of it and put it on Twitter and said, hey, what the fuck is this? I think I'm the only one who... Talked about that. I don't think any of you listening have heard about that, have you? Because you don't follow the president of Mexico on Twitter. I get that. Why would you? But the president of the country that borders America, the country that was just shooting down UFOs about a week ago, and no one has asked for follow-up information, the country right below that one, Mexico, president of it, steps outside, looks up, sees an alien in a tree, snaps a pic, posts it, and says, what's this? And still, we are worried about COVID again. We're worried about Tom Brady doing stand-up. I'm still worried about the aliens. Can we get a little focus, a little concentration out of each and every one of you? Can we stick to one topic? Because one of these topics might be fucking visitors from a different planet. But we're still hung up on COVID again because everyone wants to be a genius scientist for some reason. Everyone has suddenly gone through four years of undergraduate school, four years of graduate school, eight years of medical school, and four years of shadowing at a hospital. All of a sudden, we have a fuck ton of doctors. And I just don't remember thinking there were that many doctors in the world. It's very interesting. And this is coming from someone who didn't take flu shots thinks fluoride is being somewhere put somewhere and it's not good. Chemtrails, I'm open. But I'm also not an idiot. Get vaccinated. This vaccine might not be the best one because we rushed it because it was a pandemic, but it's not a weapon designed to kill you. And I can promise you the person that you found on YouTube telling you what's what is probably wrong. I will grant you there is one person on YouTube out there who's probably getting it all right, but he is a needle in a haystack. And the story of that man on YouTube, who is secretly getting everything right, is a tragedy. Because no one will listen. He will die unheard, probably unvaccinated, in a basement somewhere. But more importantly... Tom Brady is starting a career in stand-up comedy. 